Thank you. Hello everyone, I'm Nikos Mavrikanopoulos. I'm a developer of Genius Dealers. And I'm going to talk uh, about unifying access to geographic objects. If, if you're wondering what is it, I will explain during the presentation. Uh, an outline of the presentation is, first I'm going to talk about, uh, probably you know already, as I've seen, you've seen the previous presentations, but uh, I will uh, elaborate on uh, what are cryptographic tokens and modules are, uh, what are cryptographic objects, what I mean by it, and uh, what, uh, what do I mean by access to the objects, and what are the open issues that we face today, and uh, also about the modules, uh, how do we access to today, and what issues we have. So, uh, as you may know or not, crypto tokens are uh, various hardware things that we use not only to store keys, and actually not to store keys, but to use operation on, on keys without actually accessing the keys. So when you insert a cryptographic token on a card reader, you see it's a smart card or a USB token, you insert it on your PC, you can perform cryptographic operations, but you are sure that after you remove the token, the PC doesn't have any access to the key. So there can also be software tokens. Uh, non keying is a security module that is pure in software. And all of these tokens, they can be accessed in a common way uh, via PPC uh, API. Uh, what do they contain, these tokens? They can contain the of keys, uh, the corresponding certificates, uh, and probably a list of trusted certificates. So they can contain stuff that you can use to authenticate yourself to some uh, site or some other party. And uh, they are mainly accessed through biggest 11 modules. What are these modules? Uh, because 11 modules are just normal server libraries that they provide, provide you access to a consistent API that give you access to operations, like cryptographic operations. If you search your system, may, probably you have uh, uh, some uh, sort of library in uh, this directory. <coughs> now I'm going to, to talk about uh, accessing objects and what are the issues. So, uh, in typical uh, applications today, cryptographic applications, when you want to provide your identity, they ask you for a, for a key file and a certificate file. What are these? It's, it's, a, it's a file that contains your private key and your, your certificate. Let's say if you use the NodeLS CLI client or the OpenSSL client, in, in order to connect to a site, you can specify at the command line a key and a certificate. But when you want to specify a key that uh, resides on a token, you have to use really special options. Uh, Really, I don't remember how it is in OpenSSL, but it's, it's pretty hard almost <coughs> in, in every program to do. And some, even worse, some programs, they require you to enter the slot number of, uh, of the smart card. Let's say if you have a, a smart card reader that uh, has many slots, it might require you to type the slot number, but you don't really care about that. So what are the problems? objects are referenced in a way that is really unique per application. Uh, we, do, we don't like that. Uh, why should I specify a different option for OpenSSL and different for NTLS and different for any other library? So what requirements do we have for that? How, how can I identify an object in a, in a unique way? Object has an object ID. In, uh, now, the whole context is PKCC11. Uh, every object has an uh, object ID. It has a type. It can be a certificate, a private key. It can be some other data. And also, there is a token ID, which says uh, this object uh, resides on this token. So you don't copy a different uh, object that resides on, on an, uh, another uh, token, but might have the same ID. And also, what we want is to know we, we, how are we going to access this object, via which module. Say, if you use OpenSC and you want to access a, a PKS11 card, you want to specify that I want to access this module via the OpenSC interface, not some other uh, interface that is not easy in your system. 
So some examples. Uh, let's say Nova VPN in order to specify a, a private key and a certificate that resides on a on a token, you have to specify an ID something like this. In OpenSSL, uh, uh, if you use the PKC11 OpenSC engine, it's some other different ID. But a nice, a nice thing that occurred in uh, the Oracle PKC11 implementation is that they created the con concept of PKC11 URLs. This is a standardized uh, way to specify tokens, standardized uh, via EF. It's uh, uh, specified on this draft. And it can be used to, to uniquely specify, describe a token, and also an object. You can specify both, both things. This is how it looks like. It's, uh, I think, it's more readable than, let's say, the PKC11 helper uh, string. Although it might be a bit intimidating, but it's it's pretty clean. Uh, what does it mean? It means this object is. It's a certificate. The same has that ID. It is uh, resides on that token uh, made by this manufacturer and uh, this model. So, what are the advantages of using URLs to to identify objects? We can uh, we can describe all tokens. Uh, it doesn't care about uh, any slots. And it can be used to share between applications. Let's say if all applications uh, decide to st standardize this URL scheme, you can copy, you can copy, let's say, the, the position of your certificate, your URL, from one application to the other. And a nice also property is that it can be used in command line because they are purely text. You can. Let's say if you use GNU uh, TLS CLI, uh, you can specify instead of a key file, you can put a PKC11 URL and GNU TLS will uh, just load uh, your certificate and your private key from the smartphone. And this is a back backward compatible way to specify keys that are either on your file system or reside on a token. Uh, yeah, this is the proposal. What we propose as a multi-res project to to to, do, to, do, to describe uh, objects on top. So I'm going to talk about a different problem that uh, is mainly for developers that work with uh, PKC11 modules. Is we had uh, these problems implementing uh, PKC11 support in multi-res. There's no system-wide uh, way. To, to to read, uh, to, to know which PKC11 library, libraries to use. Let's say in my system there are many libraries, but I, I don't want to use them all. How can I, can we system-wide uh, specify these libraries should be there? They should be loaded by GNU-TLS or by OpenSSL or by any other project. We don't have this today. And also PKC11 has issues when multiple users uh, use a, a module. I'm going to talk about the first one first. There is a proposed uh, file system here, key sta a standard that uh, they say who put all the modules uh, in that directory and uh, load, uh, then uh, GNU TLS and OpenSL will load them. But it has a problem. I, I found there that there is some testing modules that as long as you use it in GNU TLS, you get some uh, errors in the standard, standard error. They say this is a testing module and stuff. This is not nice. Also, I found that OpenSC has two, two libraries that uh, have the same identification as PS11. And uh, wh when you, you list uh, objects, they give you the same objects, uh, sharing the same URLs. So it's, it's, uh, it's impossible to, to use this directory and uh, load all the libraries from that. So for GNU-TLS, we use a, a special configuration file, although this is not a solution. We, we want something better than that. So, this is an open problem today. Another problem, uh, access to modules. We do. In uh, Linux, in Debian or so, it's very common to have uh, 
setups like this. You can have a layout where an application is using two subsystems. One subsystem is using NUTLS and the other is using OpenSSL. And let's say, let's suppose that both they use objects from PKC11, from a, even from different libraries of, for the, from the same library. What will happen when some subsystem B, let's say it's no longer used by the application. Say it's a dynamic loaded library and the application unloads it. OpenSSL will uh, clean up and will also uh, clean up because it's 11. Then if NutLS will stay uh, looking at nothing, you will have no backend and either the application will crash or it will be just unusable. So this is, this is the second problem of PKS11. We need a way to make it usable by multiple users in the same application. The, uh, in order to, to solve these issues, uh, Steph uh, Walter, uh, who will uh, be presenting next, he is uh, working on that, on a, a solution uh, called P11Kit. Uh, P So, what I've told you actually is what op open problems we have. I, I propose a solution only to the first one, and the others one are still open. So today, we have no common way to specify objects. Uh, PKS11 URLs might be a solution that we like in TLS. And we have problems accessing modules uh, in, in a single application, and uh, we have problems with the configuration file that is not there. Are there any questions? Sorry, I don't hear. Who has adopted this URL scheme? Has anybody adopted it? Uh, the Oracle PKC11 module uses, and GNU-TLS already uses. And no. And no. And no kidding. Maybe, maybe I can testify it's a real problem in uh, smart cards. We do a lot of testing and it's very usual that you can lock the smart card with one application and then you cannot stop another application. So your, your piece of software is, uh, is really, really important for the community. I would say it's, a, it's, a, it's an absolute uh, priority. Have you made experiments? So I think, uh, what, what about other SSL and security libraries? You said... How about uh, other libraries? Yes, I think you focus on GNU TLS right now. Actually, I, I described problems I had during the implementation of this thing on GNU TLS, but uh, I think the same problems exist uh, in other libraries. Every library has its own way. OpenSSL has its own way of specifying objects. Uh, NSS has its own way. It has a web interface or something. Uh, I don't think you can do it on I don't know. But uh, the, the same problems are there. It's nice if they're solved in all of them. You're saying that all the applications should be using a common configuration file, where it will be specified which modules should be used. Yeah. But uh, that would uh, be quite uh, platform specific, because you would uh, have to have a specification, for example, for the Linux systems. What do you mean different? Like a well, for example, uh, if you want to have a cross-platform solution that will work on both uh, Mac OS, Linux, and Windows, you uh, have to define for it how to compare the class uh, uh, So could, could, you, could you close the door because I really can't hear. In the case of the Unix-like systems, uh, that would be easy to accomplish because most Unix file systems uh, uh, comply to the F FHS. But in case of Windows, uh, it has files all over the place, and it would be a good question where such a configuration file should be placed. And you mean about a solution that also covers Windows? Yeah, I suppose Windows will use something different. It will not use a configuration file, maybe but something in the registry or... Still, in the end, you'd have to push uh, a kind of standard for that. But in, in Windows, you don't really care. It has its own uh, framework for cryptography. I, d I don't know. Although NutLS, let's say, also runs in Windows, uh, maybe it's easier to use the PKS11 or the CSP thing in uh, in Windows. But uh, I, I don't know. 
how, how it can be cross-platform, a configuration file cross-platform in Windows and the Linux. I don't know. Well, I, that's the thing that I'm actually implying. With. It's quite uh, platform specific solution. It could be at least for all POSIX systems uh, that have a file system. <laughs> I, I think that rather than a configuration file, if it's going to be really cross-platform, then it needs to be a, a configuration API, as in a library provider that that <coughs> uses whatever system-specific backend to, to, uh, it could, it could also to also store be. configuration as it it's relevant for that system. I, I think a, just a plain file might be, it, it will work fantastic, uh, fantastically well on POSIX-ish, systems, but it might not be enough to cover others as well. Yeah. Um, another question that I I thought of here, the PKCS11 URLs, have you seen them used in a GUI anywhere? Does is, is, are they, is yeah. the Oracle thing a, a graphical, does it have a graphical user interface? I've, I've only used it in a command line. Okay. okay. But why, what's the difference? Uh, usually in a GUI you wouldn't see them. You would see only a description of your object. Yeah. And you could also copy the object, let's say, from one application to the other. And when you copy, you don't care seeing, actually, what do you copy. It's like when copying files. Except the file is just one object, uh, or just one... Um, it has one atom of identity, a single single, uh, it's the same single field it's of identity. It's pretty unique. It's not, it's not, it's unique. Yeah, sure, it's unique, but it's... It's if you have a graphical user interface, uh -huh. the wrong way to do it is to have a text box where you paste the PKC as 11. Or you can drag and drop if you're uh, graphical. Yeah, that's the, yeah, 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 I'm sure. It would be the, the, a nice backend to drag and drop. Mm -hmm. You just transfer your URLs. Yeah, so that, that was my question. If you had seen it implemented anywhere in, or... I, I don't know. know. Uh, the only know. other implementation I have seen is Oracle. Yeah, uh, but uh, it's also a command line. Okay, but uh, may, maybe we are implementing it in the GUI library and you know. Okay. <laughs> maybe the, the idea that we would see some kind of a tree, tree widget, and then select the one you want, and then internally the URL will be used without the user even seeing the URL. Is that, is that the idea? I suppose. Like that. Yeah. Okay. So then that answers his question, which is. In a GUI, the URLs will not be seen at all. I have a question. The uh, mm, RFC or whatever the document was, uh, it's also done by Oracle guys. Yeah. Okay. So basically, it's a chicken and egg thing. Uh, it's it's done by Oracle guys, but it has uh, a lot of feedback from me and uh, Steph. From, uh, from how how is the IETF process going there? Uh, it's just an information RFC. Uh, it's not much process. When they say they are ready, it can be published on information RFC. It's not a standard. I think there are there are two issues with the thing. The one is that the URL omits uh, the actual path to the file name, what the application eventually has to do. It has to deal open the, the, the shared library. And uh, the, second, the second thing is that somebody asked about cross-platform usability. Uh, the thing is that Linux or, or the Unix, the free Unix, is the only platform which doesn't have any kind of a, a system API, which the Fedora guys are trying to fix by, you know, resorting to a single uh, kind of a platform support, the distribution support, the uh, Triple Ref library, which is NSF, <coughs> which kind of solves it because it just has its own internal kind of a thing that registers all the, the models you want to use, which is of course not reusable. Uh, which forces you to use NSS, which is also a, not a failure, I think, for, for most Linux users. Yeah, it can be one solution, but about the first thing you said, uh, that uh, you don't have the library there, I don't think you want to have the library there. Uh, what you, you can do, actually, is have the library <coughs> name there, uh, the PC name of the library. So as long as the application has, uh, as I said, you, you need a configuration file or something that you can know which libraries to load, as long as you have them, you, you can know which library to load the, so you the object from. You, you split the configuration <coughs> into two. You're going to have the application specific one, or you're going to depend on the file system in Oracle standard, and you have your own, like your specification. You anyway split the, the problem into more you know, pieces you have to manage, from my point of view. Yeah, 
actually when you have a big program it's better to build it. So it's uh, well the, the idea is great, you know, drag and drop. It's like it's like so that's something that's actually missing is uh, uh, people say that you know GNOME and KDE how can they you know work together? But the free desktop uh, uh, has a lot of standards that deal with like drag and drop and you know that should work across applications with different frameworks. Well, it's a good idea because you have small cards that have a proprietary middleware and you have an OpenSC implementation. So if, if you have the, in the URM, you have the, the, uh, the, the pass for a proprietary one, you could have an application that would use the same URL using the OpenSC middleware. So it's, it's not good to hard code things that are not necessarily relevant into the URL. It's definitely interesting. But but for me, the best thing is not the drag and drop, but the fact that you're going to use the old options, specify a key file, and a certificate file, to read the URL and then act appropriately. So you don't really need uh, uh, obscure options, let's say, PKC 11 ID or something. You just use the old options and specify PKC 11 URL there. Another question, is there a reference implementation actually implementing using the URLs? In GNU-TLS. In GNU-TLS. The development uh, release uh, uses the URLs. Right, because it, it needs to be re very easily kind of uh, usable again. Yeah. No. Uh, I have one question. I'm not sure if it's really relevant to the topic, but um, I just wonder if there's any access control in these um, URLs. Can you prevent other applications from accessing um, cryptographic tokens that are have to be plugged into the system? Yeah. Usually tokens are protected by a pin or something. So it depends on the token, how, whether the driver will allow you to access or not. I, I don't know, probably Martin, you know better about how to tokens Basically, it's access just, you know, <coughs> what the URL tries to do, URL is a resource specific specifier. You just you know, point to a resource, how the token actually protects its resources, its total updating token or implementations. Left outside of Pegasus 11, even. Okay. Thank you. If there are no more questions. No. Thank you.